Hello, this is Jerry Ganfield with the Steele County Historical Society, where our mission is preserving and sharing history today for tomorrow. There were lots of lawsuits focused on the phonograph development, often between Thomas Edison and Emil Berliner, who invented the mass production flat phonograph record, and other inventors. Learning how to market recorded music as home entertainment was also part of this process. The Victor Talking Machine Company was officially founded by Eldridge Johnson in 1901. Johnson and his staff made several noticeable improvements uh, from the Edison home phonograph, including a tapered tone arm, improved sound boxes, and quieter, more stable running spring. Plus, he recorded well-recognized opera stars and musicians and used their endorsements to promote the products. He coupled that with a well-funded advertising campaign. The large horns, however, continued to be a problem. All phonograph record companies used them at that time, and they still took up a large space in the parlor, and they were subject to damage, as a lot of dented horns in antique collections attest. About 1905, Johnson and his staff experimented with folding the horn downward into the cabinet so the horn was below the turntable. Two doors covered the opening. When they were open, the sound was loud. Closed, they muted the sound. This design was patented and copyrighted with the name Victrola. The first Victor Victrola was marketed in 1906, the cabinet being made by a Philadelphia furniture company. It marketed for $200, about twice the price of an external horn phonograph. But by 1909, 15,000 Victrolas had been sold, and by 1913, they were selling about 250,000 a year. That was the year the first electric motor options became available, though sales were insignificant until well into the 1920s, awaiting electric power to reach the potential customers and restoration of their money to their pocketbooks after the Depression. During World War I, Victor transitioned to producing biplane wings and other war needs, but returned to the market. However, the radio had come into play with a variety of music and programs and better sound quality, so these $275 models by 1924 were selling for $25, if they could sell them at all. By 1929, RCA bought the Victor Company and became the RCA Victor Company, hanging on during the Depression and reviving again with better technology and times in the late 1930s.